Hello, good evening, good evening everyone, hello, hello, yes, it's seven o'clock in the evening, I'm still awake, only been up since half past four, but I'm all right. Hello Anne, how are you my lovely? Oof. Oh, here we go, hello Scylla. How is everyone? Deborah says greetings, good evening. Hello Karen, oh my word, hello princess. Like we can't stay away from each other. Sophia, Ala, Ola from Wanstead. Sue says good evening. Oh no, it's the phone. I can't take the phone call now. It's only Julie, it's fine. Hello, Jackie. Good evening from Aberdeen, says uh, that's Jackie. Oh, Sandra says good evening from Aberdeen. Cheryl says good evening, John. Hello. Claire, who makes things, waving to everybody. Hello, Maureen. Claudia, good evening. How are you, my lovely? Jane says, hello, gorgeous John. Don't know which Jane she's... Where you? Hello, Jenny Bradley. Not heard from you in ages. How are you? Claudia, hello, my lovely. Uh, Lou says, hello, John. Got my... That's all it says. Got my... Margaret says, evening. Uh, how is everybody? I'll wait for a few more to come on. Uh, you, John, you may begin. I'm here. <laughs> hello, it's a Shane. That was Marie. Hello, Sharon, my lovely. Julie will realise I'm on air now. Good evening, says Kate. Karen. Hello, Karen, my lovely. Oh, it's very warm this evening, is it? Laurie. Oh, Laurie's book's already arrived. I'm going to tell you how to get the book and Laurie's has already arrived. Uh, Joanne says, good evening. Can't stay too long. It won't go on too long tonight, Joanne, I promise. Teresa says, evening, John. Oh, now listen, I'm just going to shut the door because otherwise I'll hear the answer machine beeping away. Sandra, good evening. After a stressful day at Sewing Street. Oh, it was, wasn't it? Diana says hello. Teresa says hello. Uh, oh, hang on, let's get through these. Esther, good evening, John. Having my tea and watching you. Can't wait. Les says great. Sewing Street show today. Yeah, no, but all those gremlins. Christine, hello, John. Dex, it's been a long day for you. Thank you for giving up your free time. I don't mind, Christine, at all. Karen says, good evening from cool, cloudy, northwest Lake District. Geraldine, hello, John and everyone. Hope everyone is well. Bernie says, hello, John Scott and everyone. Lovely. It is a lovely evening now. It wasn't earlier. It went really grey. Really grey earlier. It's your animal magnetism, says Princess. Ian says, good evening, John. Uh, oh, good evening, John. Oh, they're coming in thick and fast now, aren't they? Good evening, John. Where do you get your energy? Great Christmas shows today. Pam Minihani says, Minihani says hello. This book, Claire, that we're about to talk about. That's what the whole thing's about tonight, Claire. Keep up, love. Uh, Anastasia, good evening, John. Love the shirt this evening. Thank you. Shaz says, good evening from the other end of the village. Lou says, got my cup of tea and snuggled on my sofa, ready for this. Got my book. It's beautiful. Oh, you've already got all your books. Oh, well done. You've been very good. Anna says, hello, John. Linda says, hi, John. Carol says, hi, John. Uh, evening, John. Very warm. It is warm here today. Anne says, good evening and happy Christmas. That was during the day. It's not Christmas at night time. Lowe's just arrived in Budapest. Oh, no, Bued. Bued. Uh, Judith says, good evening, everyone. Carol says, exciting. This is my first John session. I'm a newbie. Hello, Carol. How are you, my lovely? Morag says, evening. How is everyone? Liz says, good evening as well. We'll do all the good evenings and then we'll start. Oh, there's tumble down quilt, quilts. Hello. How are we? Uh, Diana says, not only is it warm, but my fridge freezer has died. Oh, no. Julianne says, Hello. Uh, I, I'll just wait for a more couple more of you. Mary Jane, good evening, my lovely. Gina says, hello, you. Hello, you. Oh, it's warm. It's very warm, isn't it? Suzanne, uh, Susan says, hello to everyone. Amory, it was the Christmas elf causing the mischief. Oh, it, we had so many gremlins today. Louise says, good evening, John. Uh, right, shall we make a start then? Oh, hang on. Francis says, good evening, everybody. Evening says, Sue. She's called me Joe. She's missed off the end. John. Maureen says, good evening. Anne says, hello. Oh, there you are, Anna. Where you are? I wonder if June's in yet as well. Jules. Good evening, Anne. Quick watch before it comes back so we can celebrate our wedding anniversary. Oh, is your wedding anniversary today, Jules? You can catch up later. Later. Maureen says, where'd you get your energy? Geraldine says, my niece is there with her hubby and three girls, Summer, Lily and Poppy. Oh, imbued. Imbued, that is. Uh, Maureen says, where'd you get? I've done that one. Lee says, hi, John. Looking forward to this evening. What's saying long? Anne said, I think it was that naughty elf. Oh, I know. Oh, Sue's phone keeps dying. Oh, Stuart's in. Stuart's watching. 
Good evening, John. And all says Caroline. Busy embroidering uh, my flower square. Oh, already? You're so brilliant. We'll talk about that later. Looking forward to this evening with you. Carol says, good evening, Francis. Uh, Kathy says, oh, I made it on time. Claire says, uh, hi, John. Just poured a G&T, so I'm ready. Paula says, good evening, everybody. Carol says, good evening and a big heart. Uh, Ghislaine says, hello, John. Lots of lots going on outside today. There's helicopters and all sorts. Evening, says Linda. How are you? The Crazy Lorraine. Uh, only seen bits of saying Street to my uncle who's nine shoes very poorly. Oh, Crazy Lorraine, send him our love. It was it was a mad show because things all kept going wrong. Hello, Donna, my lovely. Right. So the reason we're having uh, this chat this evening. Uh, e Anita says good evening all. Let me get comfortable because I've got to be comfortable. Shirley says good evening. Uh, I'll just I'll wait for a few more of you to come in then, because you're still coming in. Maggie says hello. Uh, Iris says, good evening, John. Didn't realise you were on. Oh, yes, Iris. We're talking about the book tonight. Evening, says Vida. We're talking about the, my friend Ellie's new book tonight. Angela says, good evening. We won't stay long. It won't be a really, really long one. Hi, John. What's happening? Diane, did you not see the, did you not see the post? We're having a reading of my friend Ellie's new book. Anne says, good evening, from North Lincolnshire. Right, okay, so my friend Ellie Barker, oh, just got a message from Birmingham Hippodrome, just come on my phone as well. Are you doing this each week and reading a chapter each? No, Anne, you have to buy the book. You have to buy the book. I can't do a chapter every week. This is just to introduce you to it. Some of you already know Ellie Barker because you bought her last book, which we'll talk about in a second. So um, what I want you to do, hello, Liz. Hello, Liz. This is my very expensive graphics here. EllieBarkerWrites.com. That's where you need to go, elliebarkerwrites.com. Now, you know her last book, lots of, good evening, Judith. A lot of you got her last book, The Pink Coffee Shop, and you absolutely loved it. You could read along, Anne. You could. I don't know if I've got that many evenings off. And then it would clash with the holidays, wouldn't it? Anyway, so this was the book she did before. This was her first book. Huge bestseller. Went to the top, it went to the charts on Amazon. Oh, hang on, my embroidered flowers. Hang on, princess. Are in the hoop all ready to go. All I've got to do is find the skeins. Oh, you're very good. We'll talk about the, we'll talk about the dress and the, 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 those in a minute. Because tonight's about this. This is a nice chat. Did you not see my note, Cousin Susan, that I was doing this tonight? So Ellie Barker wrote this. She loved this book. Anne Bentley loved this book. Absolutely loved it. So many of you did. Laurie loved it. Karen from Wigan did. Oh, Sally's got shingles. She needs cheering up. Amanda's doing the English paper piecing while watching you. And Downton Abbey. Well, that'll be confusing. Me, Hugh, and that. Uh, John, it's Janet in Kidlington. Hello, Janet. At Kidlington, that's where my um, nephew lives. My nephew's a, um, a trainee pilot in Kidlington. Anyway, so she wrote this. It should be us that are sitting comfortably, then you'll begin. Yes, Jan. I, I've never known you sit still, Jan, anyway. So that's not likely to happen, is it? So this was her first book. This was Ellie's first book. The way I know Ellie, I'll just tell you very quickly. The way I know Ellie... Is, do you remember last year, Dulcie, my friend Dulcie, raised all that money for charity and we did all the NHS things. Evening, Susan. And um, I nominated her for uh, Pride of Britain Awards. And uh, Gloucester TV or Bristol TV. Hello, Anne in Lancashire. Lancashire. They came to make a film of, of Dulcie. And I had to be there because I was the one who nominated her. Uh, oh, Iris says, I bought that one. But I haven't read it yet. Must take it on my cruise in October. Get this one as well. Get this one, Iris. You got two of them. Uh, Lorraine's looking forward to this. Anyway, so they came to film. There was this very, very handsome um, cameraman. Very, very handsome cameraman. He came in and we were chatting away. Hello, Paula. And then Ellie arrived and we started the interviews and everything. And she and I kept looking at each other going, I'm sure we know each other. I'm sure we know each other. Oh, hang on. Uh, Sally had shingles once. It was terrible. Didn't know what to do with myself. Oh, no. Janet says, I used to work in Kidlington Airport, says Janet. Your graphics can't stop working. What, here? No, there were, oh, these, these, these won't stop working. Amanda. Oh, Amanda's doing Downton and me as well. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, it turns out that Ellie and I worked together at ITV when I was on this morning and she was just a junior. And uh, we can't remember if we met on Lorraine Kelly's show or if we met on this morning, but we then realised we had so many mutual friends and everything like that. We became, we, came, we became friends. Then when her book came out, I said, oh, you must come on the John Scott show and talk about it, which was what she did when I used to do the John Scott show. Anyway, I've been going on and on and on at her. Um, of, uh, on and on and on at her. Anyway, she's written another one. Not because of me, obviously. She's written this one, right? It's called The Juggle, which we'll talk about in a minute. And I will be reading. What? I missed the start. This is it. This is Ellie's new book. 
Hannah Bradley Cohen. It's my friend Ellie's new book, right? Um, if you already got the pink coffee shop, you don't have to. You don't have to read that one to know this one. They're different, but they're based in the same sort of. They're all based in the world of TV. Who couldn't put it down there? Love the book, Sylvia. Couldn't put it down. I hope um, Ellie's going to watch this later because she'll see. Oh, there you go. Lou's just bought the new one. Right. Okay. The new one. If you go to elliebarkerwrites.com, there's a link, right? There is a link where you can go and buy it. Or that just takes you to Amazon. So you can buy it off Amazon. So it's the same thing. Whichever you buy it from, Ellie gets whatever she gets for it. So I'm not, um, it doesn't, she doesn't mind which one you go to. Also, while you're here, while you're here, she's got a, it's not a blog. What's it called? A podcast, right? She's got a podcast. I'm number two on the podcast. If you want to listen to an hour of her and me chatting, go to the podcast. And this, I think it's one of her top a top listen to podcast there. Anyway, anyway, you go there and you can get, you can buy either of these books. If you haven't get the first one, why did the film crew come? Oh, keep up, Hannah. Um, it was because Dulcie had been nominated for Pride of Britain Awards and they were making a film of all the nominees. So they were filming Dulcie in her workshop and I then had to be there to say I nominated Dulcie. Right, Diane, the covers are very appealing. Aren't they nice? That was the first one. This is the second one. The second one's much thicker than the first one, I have to say. Um, Anyway, so so that's why the TV cameras were in Dulcie's garden. Um, it's on my YouTube. You can see the interview on my YouTube at John Scott Saying World YouTube. It's there. My battery died, Don, so I've missed it all. Oh, Claire. Plug it in. Plug it in. Anyway, so I've been going on and on at Ellie. Oops. About getting this. Loads of you bought this one. So I just said I'd do a little reading of this one. Because uh, all we did on the first one was I read out what goes on on the back. And that's all right. You're very welcome, Hannah. And um, then I thought I'd read the first chapter. They're not long chapters. You do make me laugh, says Jeanette. What have I said now? I haven't even started reading yet. Oh, June, there you are. I was just asking where you were. Honestly, you're all in the middle of your dinner. You're all in the middle of your dinner, I imagine. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So um, uh, I'm hoping Ellie will watch this later anyway, because she'll be able to... Uh, well, she won't be able to answer your questions, because we'll be gone by then. But um, anyway, she'll she'll get in touch with you. But, uh, actually, on the thing on Facebook where I've put them right in, she's answering your questions anyway on there. So if you go to elliebarkerwrites.com or you go to Amazon and put in Ellie Barker the Juggle, you better buy it there. They have both still got it here. You can get it hot like this and it's a book. Or you can get it on your Kindle. You can get it on your Kindle as well. Oh, June's been sorting Misty the cat out. So um, so you can get them both you can get them both there. So and also, like I said, when you go to our website, go and listen to her podcast. Because there's a, a, a whole hour of her interviewing me, chatting. Well, I think I'm doing most of the chatting anyway. But she's very, very good. You might know, if you live in Bristol, that sort of area, you might know her off the telly. She's that, I wonder if there's, there's, a, I wonder if there's a picture of her in here. Oh, no, that's funny. She's not put a picture in. Um, I'll show you what she looks like. Oh, Paula's got hers. Well done, Paula. Home, let's go to home. I wonder if she's, oh, now, I wonder if she's put a picture of herself on, the, on her website. Yeah, here she is. Some of you will know her. From, let me just show you this very quickly, right? Some of you will know her. Oh, no, I've got to turn you around, haven't I? This is her, this is her. She works on ITV News in the Bristol area. This is very tense inside here. Are you ready? Let's go in. Oh, that's not her. That's not her there. That's her in the square in the background. You look pretty high up there. That's her. So you might know her. You might already know her. Uh, Julie, I'm at home, but I just heard you ringing, but I'm just doing this. Oh, Julie didn't message me here. Um, anyway, 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 no. So, so anyway, so I was going to read, I was going to, did Julie send me a message in here or did she send me a message on my phone? Lots of messages came in there. So, uh, Lee says, Mary Jane, man, enjoy, hope you, uh, hope he has you in stitches. I wonder what that one, I wonder what you're talking about, Lee. Uh, uh. uh Geraldine says, hope you've had your tea, John. Yes, yes, I've had my tea, I've had my tea. Uh, Linda's got it. Eileen says, evening, John. Couldn't get on with the first one, so I'll be interested. Oh, couldn't get on with the first one. Oh, that's interesting. So I'm interested to see what this one's like. Oh, Eileen, why didn't you like it? You see, we do everything here. It's like FIFA. We do everything here. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So uh, this is her new book here. This is her new book, right? Um, and it's called The Juggle by Ellie Barker. I'll get on with it now. So I'll just read what it says on the back first. Oh, no. Before I read what it says on the back, right, there's acknowledgements in the back of the book, right? And we get a mention. We all get a mention. Look, I'll show you here. Look, 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 look. I'll read to what it says, right? But look, it says there, to John Scott and his incredible ladies, right? So this is in the acknowledgements of this book. And it says, 
To John Scott and his incredible ladies, your generosity of spirit is so special. You chat, your great friends and do some excellent sewing too. But the wonderful world you have created has been so warm and welcoming to me too. You've introduced me to some fantastic readers in bracket Sylvia Cardwell. Don't know what Sylvia's got. And I am convinced the pink coffee shop went so high up in the charts thanks to all of you. That's us. She's talking about us. She's talking about us there. I know. Anyway, so let me read the back of the book. Right. So this is what the book is about. Before you buy it, you might want to know this. Right, let me just have a slurp of water. Oh, look, anne has got hers from, uh, from Amazon. When married couple, Molly and Dan. Isn't that nice? It was nice of her to do that. She didn't need to do that, did she, Maureen? Right, shh, shh, I'm concentrating now. When married couple, Molly and Dan, are forced to swap lives, will it bring them closer together or drive them further apart? It was only a blip, just a little mistake. But in the world of television, Dan Whitehead's little slip could cost him his career. And we all know what that's like, don't we? His only chance was to swap roles with his wife, Molly, who works part time behind the scenes at the show. It, oh, that Molly, who works part time behind the scenes at the show. It was just for a few weeks. Easy, he thought. What's so hard about looking after their twins and taking a step away from the limelight for a bit? Only it's not quite as simple as Dan may think. With more time, his past begins to haunt him. Then, when a friendly school mum makes him an offer he can't refuse, is she everything she seems? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Molly is more than happy in her hoodie and yoga leggings. Not that she ever does yoga. She's more of a stay-at-home and listen-to-self-help kind of girl. Why would she want to go back on screen when she doesn't even like leaving the house? But she needs to save her husband's job after all. And it is all her fault. Then, when she's offered an exclusive interview on the other side of the world, like when I went to Jackie Collins. That's not written here. That's me talking there. Her life in Cherry Blossom Park is under threat. Why is she the only person to ever, <clears throat> no, to ever be offered this interview? Dan must never know the truth. Is a marriage ever big enough for two dreams to come true? Molly, Dan and their friends in Cherry Blossom Park are all about to find out. That's just the back. That's just the back there. We haven't even started chapter one yet. I'll start chapter one. Let's see if I missed any messages there. Oh, Ma Laurie got hers an hour ago. This is like Jack and Ori with John Oi. Story time with John Scott says princess. Right, OK. So this is the book. If you want to get it. Go to elliebarkerwrites.com or you can just go straight to Amazon. But the link on her face, on her page, takes you straight through to Amazon. Oh, now here you go. Iris is just ordering it. Good job, my cruise is 14 days. I've got two books to take. Maureen's just gone, ooh, I know, Maureen, I know. So let's start, shall we? Let's start. Right, chapter one. <clears throat> chapter one. Now, if I look down, I apologise. Oh, my, missed you. Just on now and got this book ordered. Oh, well done. You haven't missed me. I haven't started yet. Who was that? Jacqueline. I'm just starting now. Just starting. Right. Disaster Day, chapter one. It was exactly 6.02pm and 16 seconds that Molly Whitehead witnessed their star reporter commit career suicide. She knew it was this exact time because the headlines, the Daily Blossom, had been read and the titles had run. Vince, Vince King, the presenter, has made his way through the link without any stumbles and then he crossed live to the location. A bad stumble had, in the past, made it 6.02pm and 31 seconds. But there was no stumbling. It was 6.02 and 16 seconds, just as they had rehearsed. Only it wasn't just as they had rehearsed. She had read along with the words on autocue, just as she always did, nothing had changed. Vince, link to Dan, live report. That comes up on the autocue. Hello and welcome to The Daily Blossom, the show which keeps you up to date with the real stories you need to know. Tonight's top tale is one that has, which has rocked the people of Cherry Blossom Park. Ooh. In Bristol. Oh, it's based in Bristol. And I mean rocked. Rock Bottom has been a much-loved jewellers in the area for more than 30 years. Engagements, weddings, christenings, birthdays, you name it. If you live near Cherry Blossom Park, very likely there was a gem from Rock Bottom involved. But today, unexpectedly, 
It made its own announcement. It's closing its doors with immediate effect. Mm. We can cross live now to our chief reporter, Dan Whitehead. Dan, who the story's about. Dan, nobody can quite believe this. No, nobody could quite believe this or that their chief reporter wasn't ready. Instead of standing poised and waiting on location, just as he did every single night, like the professional he was, when Bill, the director, cut to him, na cut to him now, Dan was mid some was mid some sort of rant. This was not all. He appeared incapable of being able to stop the rant despite being live on air. Who cares about Spider-Man? It's not like he's a real man. He doesn't even exist, Dan said. Just like that. Except it wasn't only just like that. It's just another setup, isn't it? It's the same time, it's the same with Father Christmas. He's not real either. But still, we all go around pretending we have superpowers just like Spider-Man and Father frigging Christmas. And it's a great big joke. A ridiculous joke. This is him still talking. Only it's not a joke, is it? It's just another way to make men feel we're not up to the job. Am I right? Thanks, guys. No, Dan. No, you're wrong. And you're live on air. There, right in front of all of them, nine years of climbing the television ladder flushed back down in approximately nine seconds. Oh, no. Um, nine seconds, yeah? Instead of the mysterious collapse of the business behind him, the scene had been replaced by a very public collapse of career in front of them all. Molly could already imagine the headlines. Reporter kills Father Christmas and Spider-Man in one swipe of the tongue. The nightly audience of the Daily Blossom, which now totaled on average 1.2 million people, a bit like when I was on this morning, some weeks a steady 1.3 would be left in no doubt. And he'd said frigging. All she could do, because it was Tuesday, and this was the one day of the week when she produced the show, was sit in her large comfortable chair and stare at the monitor in front of her. The one with the big red sign saying, on air, right on top of his head. Molly pulled her curls. She looked again at the glaring red light. Yes, this moment was definitely being beamed across the airwaves. So thanks to the time delay, in approximately three seconds, the same scene she'd just witnessed would land in houses across Cherry Blossom Park and all with many households which choose to tune in from beyond. She was in no doubt that a good number of children who were either watching or happened to be near the television would never look at Christmas or Spider-Man in quite the same way again. Molly pulled her curls once more, this time so hard she winced. No, this wasn't one of those dreadful dreams. This was real. Say something, do something, Dan. That's what you have to do. But Dan stood now, quiet and still, and all he could do was stare, along with the rest of the gallery. Molly knew any minute it would hit him. Molly also knew that as the producer, she should pull down the switch in front of her and offer some words in his ear. But her mind was locked and her hands were stuck in her hair. So instead, she watched as the silence pierced the air. This is what you're good at, Dan, not me. Call yourself a producer. You're useless, Hillary whispered from the seat next to her. And Molly couldn't disagree. She felt Molly rating, the Molly rating plummet to zero. And it had only peaked as high as two for the whole of last week and the week before that. And there she saw it. His eyes suddenly widened, his jaw tightened and his hands clenched. The entire gallery staff, who also continued to stare at their monitors with their mouths open, apart from Bill, the director, who had closed his eyes. She had never seen Bill, the director, close his eyes while they were on air in the nine years she'd worked there. They were all used to the unpredictable world of live television, but she knew that they had never been part of anything like this before. Even Vince King, the show's presenter, sat open-mouthed in the studio, lost for words. In better times, some would argue that this was something to celebrate, but these were not better times. Dan was the master of live television and quick thinking. He had a cabinet at home bulging with awards, telling the world just this. If anyone could sort this out, he could. You know this is all your fault, Hillary hissed. Hillary was white. Right, she just happened to mention the name Spider-Man over Talkman because next to Rock Bottom was Cherry Toys. In her defence, she hasn't expected it would have set him off on this rant. Idiot, Hillary muttered. Molly watched Dan's eyes flicker as his brain searched for a solution. Then he ran his hands through his hair. He never ran his hands through his hair on TV. 
Or at least, at least some would say, Dan said at last, in a pitch higher than she'd ever heard him use. But those people would be wrong, because we all know Father Christmas and Spider-Man exist. And this jeweler's rock bottom has been for the last decade. So this is, why, this is why it comes as such a shock to us all that they have had to close so suddenly. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either. It was good enough for Bill, the director, to open his eyes again, play the film her husband made that day, and for Patsy, the PA, that's like mother, you know mother that comes in, she was the PA at this morning, uh, to resume counting backwards, even though Molly could see from her seat the pencil Patsy always held in her right hand was shaking. Molly had never seen Patsy's pencil shake before. Molly sat back in her chair, tried to breathe and pull her curls again. Molly, leave your hair alone. Bill raised his voice. Bill never raised his voice. Somehow, they all managed to get to the end credits. Dan finished his live report about the closure of Rock Bottom and the show went on. There was a report about the suspected rise of gangs in Cherry Blossom Park. Then a short report about the application for the planning of a new retirement village, Cherry Blossom Living. Then they moved on to some lighter stories. Well, this is more like it. Patsy tried about the school children who had opened their own sweet shop for the community, the story Molly had pushed for for weeks and weeks, and again in the morning, that meeting that day. Much as she tried, though, Patsy's cheek was still a pale grey, and Patsy's cheeks were always flushed pink. Then, on the last beat of the closing credit, the gallery door opened. Molly didn't turn around to see who it was. Molly, I will need to see you and Dan in my office. Diane's voice was low and confirmed what she already knew. No debrief tonight, everyone, she said before closing the door again. None of her colleagues looked at her as they collected their pencils and their scripts. Not even Patsy, who normally stayed for a chat about her cat and the twins. She thought of Eric and Evie. What kind of mother was she, behaving like this? They deserved so much better. Oh, how she wished to be back at home next to them. A duvet pulled over her head. The irony wasn't lost on her. Dan's report was about a business called Rock Bottom, and that is where they both were. Soon it was just her and Hillary left in the gallery. Trust Hillary to stay. See, you're useless at this, at everything, she whispered. Which is not very nice of you, Hillary. And Molly couldn't argue back. Instead, she collected her own scripts and walked to the door. I know, she said out loud as she looked back into the black monitor, because it was the only star reporter who had committed career suicide. He was her husband too. She had not just watched the life of a colleague unravel, she had watched her own life and marriage fall even more apart. That's only chapter one. That's chapter one. Now, I saw loads of messages come in then while I was reading that, so I'll just go back and check those now. Uh, oh, Denise says, good evening. Uh, oh, just lots of people joining us, that was all. Uh, as good as Audible. Oh, thank you, Lizzie. Which book is this, says Julianne. This one is called The Juggle by Ellie Barker. And you can get it from elliebarkerwrites.com. I know, it's brilliant, isn't it? Um, the Juggle. Yeah, yeah, The Juggle. Oh, thank you, Jacqueline, for replying to that one. Uh, somebody asked if I knew... Oh, blimey, that sounds like this morning, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it, Just Well, you see, that's where I know Ellie from. She works in telly like that. Gan says, great, that was brilliant. Brilliant, thanks for reading that. Well, make sure you go and buy it. Make sure you go and buy it now. You can download it for your Kindle on um, on Amazon as well. It's really good, isn't it? Oh, I could listen to your reading all night. I'm not going to Iris because my voice is going. Doesn't it sound good, Cousin Susan? Uh, I saw a message go up saying, do you know Ellie Barker? Yeah, yeah, only from, well, I knew her from decades ago, but then she came to Dulcie's house when we filmed Dulcie's house. Uh, Lou says, gripped, got Holly Bob's next weekend. No, I'm oh, yes, read it on the beach. It'd be fantastic. It's a bit heavy. It's a bit thicker than The Pink Coffee Shop, which is also... Oh, Barbara says, it's a great book. I've got both of them. Scylla said, oh, I'll have to go and order it now. Yeah, you can either go to elliebarkerwrites.com, that way, or you can go straight to Amazon. Oh, no, I've burnt my crossless quiche listening to you. That was really good, says Gerardine. Marie says, sounds like a good read. Amazon, here I come. Christine said, I've got my copy. I'm hooked. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you like it. It will be good. Thanks, John. That was lovely. That was... Thank you, Karen. What does this say? Oh, I'm a compulsive reader. Can't leave a story there, nor can I have a hard copy. Wait for a hard copy. Off to Kindle. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can download it for Kindle. Linda says it sounds quite brilliant. I'll tell Ellie all of this when I speak to her later. I know. I will tell her. Um, so make sure, make sure, make sure you go to elliebarkerwrites.com. And also, while you're there, listen to my podcast. Um, I think I started reading it, says Jan. 
I didn't, but I didn't get that far. No reflection on the book. I've been like that for a while with reading. Uh, well, do you know what? We'll have to ask Ellie to do an audible book, won't we? Do you have to read both books? No, they're completely separate, Lorraine. Completely and utterly, se utterly separate. Maureen's off to Wardrip. Uh, oh, hang on. Is it a sequel, John? No, no, they're not. They're not. They're not linked. The, the only link is that they both. They both. They're both in telly. They're both in telly. Uh, if I buy it now, I will hear it in your voice now, John. Oh, that's nice, Claire. Loved your reading. First book was good reading. I like the sort of. Oh, shh, sorry. Don't give away any spoilers. Oh, there you go. Now, Karen from Wiggins bought hers, but DPD have lost it. I know. Hopefully it'll be there soon, Karen. Oh, now I have got one as a competition prize, but I'll do that another day because I can't stick around now. Uh, you don't have to read, though. You don't have to read both books. I I'm off to get a copy once I've finished here, says Kathy. Jacqueline says, can you please do the reading for the audible book? Well, I'll ask her. I don't know. She might get somebody famous to do it, mightn't she? Or somebody who can actually do it properly. Uh, oh, there you go. Karen's going to get it on her, on her Kindle. Lovely listen to read the chapter. You should all rate an audio version. Caroline, I'll ask her. It's a lot of words, though. Look how thick it is. Oh, Karen, Laurie, Karen says hello. Right, listen, I've got to go because I know Julie's trying to get hold of me. I don't know if something's happened or not. Um, I just need to remind you about two other things. Uh, on Sunday, on my Sunday... Oh, there you go. Jenny's ordered them both. Oh, that's, you're welcome, Anne. On Sunday, it's 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, our chat, right? 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. You are famous, says Jacqueline. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, so does June. Um, on Sunday... Now, where is it? I've got a competition on Sunday. You know the native lighting, clip-on light? You know this, the light that Dulcie's got, right? I've got one of those as a prize on Sunday, on my Facebook Live on Sunday. 11 o'clock it is. Hang on, I'm going to read these messages then. I could listen to you read all day. Patsy says, thanks, John. That was lovely. Maureen says, right, John, thank you for reading. You would be great at audio. Oh, yes, I would read audio if I stumbled, yeah. I was just reading and falling asleep. Oh, Marie, thank you. And, oh, you're famous to us. Thank you. Thank you, John. Really enjoyed it. We'll go and order it now. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, see you at 11 on Sunday because we've got the competition for somebody to win the lamp. And don't forget to go to my website to look at the um, nationwide skirt that we're making. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll do it. I'll read it. Um, d d don't forget the nationwide skirt that we're doing. I'll, I'll just show you where it is. You go to John Scott Sewing World. Oh, John Scott Sewing World. And you click at the top of the top of the page here. I'm just showing. Uh, let me turn that around. John Scott Sewing World there. At the top of the page here, it says, doo -doo, Nationwide Skirt to Welcome. Do join in. Do join in with that because it's great. It's a great cause. A great cause. Uh, right, let me just quickly put that there. I'm on Sewing Street tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go to bed in a minute, but I think Julie needs to speak to me. Uh, your reading was a real treat, says Jean. Thank you. Oi, infamous. Uh, Cousin says, thank you. So enjoyed listening. I'm going to buy the book. Karen's gone for a bite to eat. Yvette says, I want to win. What do I have to do? You have to wait and watch at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Tumble Down Quilt says, thank you, John. Gerardine says, audio would be fab. Shanaz says, thank you, John. Princess says, yeah, I'm on Town Street. Yeah, yeah, I've got to go and do my prep now. Off to get the jacket spud. I'll see you later soon. Right, okay, I'm going to go because I need to go and see what Julie wanted. It was just a quickie tonight. So make sure you buy the book from elliebarkerwrites.com. And also, listen, I'm going to rest my voice. Don't worry, I'm going to go to bed soon. Um, Ellie Barker, I'm going to listen to the podcast while you're there. She does a whole hour's interview with me. And I'll see you tomorrow morning on Sound Street. I've got Alison Marion and I've got, oh, Jane Green off tomorrow. And we've got Christmas Critters. Christmas Critters at Only Arn Lane. Diane says, thanks, John. We'll have to check them out. Not read a book that doesn't have patterns and instructions for years. Oh, this is a restful one. Thank you, says Fran. Princess says, see you tomorrow. Right, I'm going to go. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, June. You take care. Uh, see you then. Good night, John. And thanks for sharing your time. It's my pleasure, Caroline. Right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go and see what Julie wants now. All right, take care. See you soon. Oh, I'll see you on Stone Street tomorrow morning. Or oh, Sunday, 11 o'clock for our chat. Uh, thanks so much, says Linda. Uh, my pleasure. You go and order it now. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.